Lame mums, eh? Jake, How you doing? Jake, go back. Change. Uh-uh. No green jacket, no hood. This is serious now. A lot of people have been DMing me, messaging me. You have to go back and change. This is not funny. It, do, are you listening to me? This is not a funny situation. Please listen to me. Jake. Oh, my God. What? What don't you understand? Oh, my God. It's Let him in. Crime. Crime. You need to go home and change. Do you the know person that I it was done to did Jake, a lot worse. I okay. To the entire country. I'm not negating To the that. entire country. I agree with you. However, there are two jackets in the back. Put one of them on. Put Jake, I'm going to not go where you want to go. I'm not driving you. Put the jacket on in the back now. Take that jacket off. You know what? Take what do you have against the hoods? jacket off. What do you have against hoods? Jake? There's only one type of hood I don't like, and it's a white one. Jake? Otherwise, I am very into the hood. I love a hooded shaft, if you will. Jake? <laughs> Hey and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Amani Forrester, author of the book 30 Reasons Why Men Deserve Nothing. It's available right now on Amazon and it's free to read if you have Kindle Unlimited. We also have a Patreon now for videos and deep dives that might be a little too much for YouTube. Links are in the description. Also, I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but many of you are being unsubscribed without your knowledge or consent, so please make sure to check that you're still subscribed and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video. So I was actually in the middle of editing a very exciting Patreon video when I came across some really pertinent news about the CEO who was taken out recently by the adjuster. I did a video about the CEO like four days ago. And there's been an update. There's been a few updates. So, and this one just came out today. So I was just like, you know what? Let me stop what I'm doing with the Patreon and just put this out there so that y'all know what's going on as well. So I actually made like a longer version of this video, but there's some clips that I, I'm not too sure YouTube would like. So I'm going to put the full version of this video on the Patreon, but you're still going to get the point. You're still going to get all the information. Um, so I hope you guys really enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to roll the clips. I'm going to come back really quickly on the back end. But like I said, I got to get back to working on my Patreon video. It's been kicking my butt for the past few days. It's it's a lot of information. So yeah, I'm going to roll these clips. I hope you guys learn a lot. Let me know what you think in the comments as well. Let's get into it. The more I find out about the situation, the more impressed I am. Deny, defend, depose on the bullet casings. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, clear message. Sent and received. We got it. Okay. They just found his backpack in Central Park and it was filled with Monopoly money. The absolute poetry of taking out a wealthy CEO while carrying around Monopoly money because that is basically what these CEOs are doing. Playing Monopoly, hoarding property, hoarding wealth while they like send us straight to jail and, and they pass go and collect $200. Is immac The poetry is immaculate. And then you've got the Edmighty PD just like bragging on this guy. I feel like they're releasing so much information they might have otherwise like kept close. And they're like, anyone in the public with any information, give us, we'll give you $10,000. And I'm like, you know that that is not enticing. I don't even think you want to catch this guy. $10,000 is not enticing. No one is giving this guy up for 10 grand. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm caught between like, I want to know more. So like, I like I want to know more about this person, but at the same time, like I never want them to be caught. <laughs> All I know for sure is the more I find out, the more insane it is. People's responses to that CEO being pew pewed a couple of days ago does not shock me one bit. Another thing that doesn't shock me at all is now I'm seeing more and more movie clips from movies I watched from in the past. I just saw a clip from The Incredibles. Remember that movie, The Incredibles? I saw that when I was 12 years old. Now, that scene where Bob, the bank, aka Mr. Incredible, works at a, at a, at a you know, loan claim or insurance claim office, and he his job is to basically deny people. Also saw another clip on, um, from, I think it was Saw 6. Same thing. John Kramer, aka Jigsaw, tries to get his, uh, you know, cancer treated. And was denied. And that dude who denied him ended up playing one of his games. And rightfully so. It also wouldn't shock me if a lot of CEOs of these different companies, we 
spend our money at day in and day out are now scared to walk outside simply because this dude who was the, you know, United Healthcare CEO literally got caught lacking. Bow. Dead. I mean, I don't want to imagine having, you know, y'all people are paying good money. People are paying good money for health insurance in this country. And it's like you get penalized when you actually need to use it. Same with car insurance. Same thing with car insurance. You get into an accident, what happens to your um your month your monthly payment? Goes up nine times out of ten. So wait a minute. You want me to pay for insurance just in case a situation happens and I might get hurt or this and that and the third. Then that situation does happen and y'all penalize me for being in that situation where I, I got hurt. Make it make sense. So what is the point of paying for insurance in the first place? What is the point of paying for it if you get penalized for using it? That is what Americans are tired of. Why do we have to pay all this money for insurance when you're punished for doing so? When you're punished for having to use it? Like, you never know what's going to happen. It's inevitable. Oh, United Healthcare is mad at me. In the wake of the unaliving of their CEO last week, United Healthcare has made a very unique decision going forward. Instead of using some of that record-breaking profit we've all been hearing about to put a little bit towards a better reward to find the assailant that did this, which I'm surprised they haven't thought of doing that. It might make them look a little bit more appealing to the public or developing ways to not deny everything that comes across their desk, they've decided to make a division or a new um, department maybe to focus on social media and not to clean up their image, to watch people like you and me talking about them. Weird. So hi, hi United. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the situation your company basically created in some sort of sick way. And I think you will have a very busy department when you realize we're all talking about you. We're all upset about what happened, but not for the way you, you would think. We're upset because we've been taken advantage of for years and our lack of empathy towards your company, towards your CEO, is only probably going to grow when you do things like this as opposed to addressing the real problems that you caused that led to this man's unaliving. So Unite Healthcare, again, hi. My name's Ray. It's nice to meet you again. I used to work for you. And I do think how you're handling this speaks volumes of your company. So this is not news that many of you are going to want to hear, but apparently they have picked up a suspect that matches the description of the adjuster. A 26-year-old man was picked up in Altoona at a McDonald's when a snitch, oh, excuse me, an employee thought that he resembled the man in the pictures. The man also had fake IDs, including one that police believe was used by the suspect in New York. The suspect was also carrying a ghost pew pew right here. Uh, it was untraceable and homemade. Now we don't know much about this situation right now. It's currently unfolding and NYPD are currently en route to Altoona PA to question the suspect and this is being reported by CNN. I don't know about you, but I just wanna know who told. There can't be that many McDonald's in Altoona. They say they found the guy. They say they found the guy at a McDonald's and that he had fake IDs and a handmade put together pew pew and whatever. Whether or not that's true, whether or not this is actually the guy, let me tell you what's gonna happen in the upcoming news cycle. You're gonna hear all about how this guy was the worst guy ever. They're gonna give you a million and one reasons to hate him and to turn on him. But you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna do that because you're smarter than that. Because we are not so easily manipulated. This has set in motion a chain of events that cannot be stopped and we are not stupid enough to fall for this news cycle. No, we are not. So when someone says he was a terrorist, you say, no, he wasn't. When someone says he was a scam artist and a con man, you say, no, he was not. When someone says he pushes over little old grandmas in his spare time, you say she probably deserved it. No, you say no, he didn't. Because we are smarter than this. We are smarter than this and they will not divide us here. Question everything you hear in the next 48 hours. Absolutely fucking everything. We stand by the adjuster. And if anybody asks you if you know what jury nullification is, no, you don't. I'm going to give you a list of increasingly unlikely things that had to happen in order for this whole we found the guy in a McDonald's in Altoona, Pennsylvania thing to be true. Number one. 
the same guy who evaded police for three days and left behind intentional false clues for them to find, including a backpack filled with Monopoly money, also walked into a McDonald's with the gun he used and a piece of paper explaining all his motivations for why he did it. Number two, the McDonald's employee, any minimum wage underpaid overworked McDonald's employee, cared enough to call in the tip. That's it. Those are the two unlikely things that had to happen. Do you still think they found him? Raise your hand if you think that this is a bunch of bullshit about the adjuster. They want us to believe that Buddy, in the middle of the biggest manhunt imaginable, just says, hmm, I'm in the mood for a Big Mac. Not a drive through Big Mac. No, I'm going to walk inside the dining room in the middle of a manhunt. And I'm going to sit my happy ass down. And matter of fact, I'm not going to leave my manifesto in the car. I'm going to bring it with me along with my tool. Because, because why? Why would somebody do that? So I'm afraid that this is what they're doing. Is putting, to, to put resolution and send the message to all of us. Because obviously we all know how this event has had more inspiration for Americans than any anything else. They're scared. So they've got to show us that someone got locked up for it, that nobody can get away with something like this. But that's false messaging because somebody did get away with it. So Mr. Adjuster, whoever and wherever you are, are you going to speak out and tell the American people about this fake-ass CIA agent or whatever that they just arrested at a McDonald's who they're going to walk in the front door of the jail and walk right back out the back door of the jail? You gonna, are you going to post a little message like Hannibal Lecter when he you know, sent Starling the letter? Are we going to see that you really did get away? Because, you know, half of me thinks that we're going to hear from the adjuster again. And they're going to prevent us from understanding that these things are connected. They're going to say, oh, it's a copycat. You know, all of this shit. I don't know, man. I don't know. But it's definitely the most interesting thing to happen in America in a long time. Law enforcement is claiming that they have someone in custody who matches the description of the UHC adjuster. Here's why I don't believe them for a second. First problem with that statement, they don't know what the UHC adjuster looks like. How could they possibly have someone who matches his description? All they have are two CCTV pictures of completely different individuals, both of whom are so heavily clothed that it's impossible to make out any of their facial features, and completely unreliable witness testimony that didn't even describe what he looked like outside of his height. If they actually knew his physical description, they wouldn't have needed a massive nationwide manhunt with tip lines open to civilians in order to lock him down. Secondly, they're claiming that he had a handwritten manifesto on him. One, that's awfully convenient. Two, it'd be completely unnecessary because he carved his manifesto into the casings of the rounds he used. Third, they're claiming that they found a silencer and a firearm that matches the description of the one used on his person. No, they didn't, because we know that the adjuster got rid of both of those shortly after the crime. Fourth, they claim he's suspicious because he had a fake New Jersey the ID. So, that is an unrelated piece of evidence and it would get thrown out in court immediately. All that proves is that he has a fake state ID. It does not prove that he used it to commit a crime. Look, is there a chance that I'm wrong about this? Of course there is. But what I think is extremely likely here is that NYPD and the FBI are panicking because the rich and powerful of the United States are up their ass, so they found a random guy who they could frame as the UHC adjuster, arrested him, they're going to put him on a show trial, and throw him in prison so they can pretend they actually solved it. So you guys just saw those videos with me, and let me know what you think in the comments about all of this. Personally, I am with the people who don't believe this ish for a second. I don't believe that they caught him. He was so brilliant in the way that he went about everything, you know, like, I don't feel like he'd slip up now and I don't feel like he'd slip up that badly. Like he thought this thing out so well. How did he get caught at a McDonald's showing his ID? You don't need ID at a, at a McDonald's. Like why would he keep his weapon? Like none of this is making sense. None of this is making any sense. I think that what it is is that the people in power, the powers that be, they kind of want you in that subservient position of just feeling hopeless, feeling helpless, letting them do what they want to you, letting them 
you know, if they want to harm you or your family, like screw you guys over. It is what it is. Like there's nothing you can do. So, um, I, I don't know. I feel like they're just trying to use someone as a scapegoat to try to be like, see, you can't do anything to us. We can do things to you, but if you try to do something to us, you will not get away. So I, I don't know. I feel like this story, maybe they just found a rando guy and they're going to use him as a symbolic figure. I don't know. It feels inauthentic to me. I don't think they caught him. Especially because, like, internet sleuths, the other day, they they wanted internet sleuths to help them. And all of a sudden, internet sleuths are like, we're not helping you. And then it's like, oh, we found him. Like, for real? Mm, it's sus to me. I think they just wanted to crush people's spirits. Everyone's coming together. Notice how, like, suddenly people who are on the left, people who are on the right, you know, it doesn't matter your ethnicity. Everyone can relate to struggling financially in these times. And everyone can relate to knowing someone or be or experiencing for themselves needing medical assistance in America and being denied that assistance and the consequences of that, you know, or, or going broke trying to pay to stay healthy. So everyone was coming together and like the people at the top, the powers that be, they need order out of chaos. They need you y'all to be fighting. Um, they need you guys separated. They need you guys to be beefing against each other, different races, different political leanings. They need everyone fighting. So it's like, y'all are coming together. Nah, we got to stop that shit. Because that's what this man represented. This man represented for a lot of people. He represented the people. And I'm not going to say what he did was right or wrong or whatever. Like, it's not for me to say. But a lot of people felt like he was kind of like a like a anti-hero in a way. And um, he was making a statement. Because, like, it had CEOs shook. Like, I heard CEOs were removing their profiles offline because they're so scared of the people. Like, when have when have billionaires been scared of the people? Like, rarely ever. So they had to put a stop to that. They had to let y'all know, no, nope, you can't touch us. You go into jail if you try anything to us. So if anything, they might just put a, an innocent man in jail just to, just to make y'all feel like you lost. We won, you lost. So anyway, I wouldn't believe anything that's happening right now in the media, <laughs> but I've always been a skeptic anyways. But yeah, like I said, I can't stick around too long. I don't want to say too much. I have to get back to my Patreon video. If y'all are not over there, come on and join. There's some amazing content that's coming and I'm so super excited for it. And it's stuff that I really can't talk about here at all. Um, I just get too like nervous. The algorithm you know, the shadow banning, the censoring, like it's, it's way too much. I can't even speak right here. If you notice, we have to use coded language all the time. It's frustrating. Um, over there, I can definitely be a lot more, um, a lot more chill, you know, and more content's coming. So definitely, uh, check it out. And yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. And thanks for all the support recently too. Like we're almost at 19 K and that's really exciting. Yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one though. Take care. Hard, but we're <laughs> <laughs>